app. Um, it is a dealer based app too. So not everyone could download the app and start using it. Um, you do need to be set up as a dealer and the dealer then will have full control on you know, who, who has access um, to the properties and to the account. So uh, first the dealer will set up the account and then from there, the dealer will set up um, the home that they're dealing with. And from there, they could give permission to the homeowner to have, to have access to the home and to be able to control the devices if they so choose um, to do. And then for, for the lighting side of our products, they set up control groups. And from there, um, they start moving products into those various groups for the joint controllability of you know, whatever they're trying to do. So um, the next tab I just wanna quickly show you is the UPS tab. Um, so it has a separate tab because these UPSs will play across devices because um, they act not only as a lighting controller, but it can also interact with our switches to do PoE um, you know, load shedding too as well to extend the battery life of these UPSs. And then the main tab that we're concerned about today is the networking tab. And in the networking tab, you'll see all our switches listed. So this is our NS48 that is showing and then all the access points installed in that house and location. So it's very straightforward. Um, you could, you know, obviously rename, you know, what products they are. Um, this little symbol shows that the product's down. Um, you know, it will show you by app or you could get an alert that certain products are down. Um, and then finally, um, this little um, um, stack, you click on it to go edit, you know, what's inside. So once you go in and you edit a product, so I'm going in to edit one access point now, and I'll show you how we roll it out to all the access points in a minute. Um, but on the main page, you'll see four main tabs, security profiles, radios, SSID, and connections, okay? And then on the top, um, this is where you can name the access point, you know, so in this case is garage. Um, country code matters, because depending on what country, uh, you install, um, you know, the certain radio standards that, you know, we need to comply to. And then finally, all our APs will show a checkbox where you can actually turn off the radios during a power outage to extend the battery life of the UPS. Uh, this is a really cool feature because some of our APs do consume a lot of power, like our WAP1 you know, consumes 40 watts. So during a power outage, it could really suck down the battery of the UPS, but you could still just shut off the radio to make a minimum power draw um, for the APs. And then you can also turn off the LEDs just in case the APs are installed in the bedroom and you, you don't want the lights, the LED lights flashing. Now, so let's drill into the security profile. And so once I click down, um, the security profiles are just that. It's you go in and you give the profile a name. So in this example, I'm showing, I just called it VLAN3 out of um, you know, the way I do it. And then from there, um, you hit the drop down and you select the wireless security you want. And on the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about wireless security. And then finally, you give the password. Um, this is the password that the user needs to log on um, to that access point. So in this example, um, you will see some default security that you know, comes with the APs, but then um, in this example, um, you know, I'm showing six you know, different security profiles. And right now it shows the encryption to be WPA2 AES, you know, which I'll talk a little bit more about um, in the next slide. Okay. So from here, once I set up a security profile, I'm eventually going to apply it to the different wireless networks or SSIDs, which I'll um, show you. Now, a, a little bit about security, because you know, we, we do get a lot of confusion around this. And um, this is a key point that I try to summarize to the best of my abilities on the way to look at some of these securities, okay? Um, first, we have the WPA, um, um, PSK TPEC. Now, this security, 
way back in the day was created in haste. Um, when access points first came out, there was a thing called WEP, um, W-E-P, which was very, um, you know, it's not even used today. If you have it, it's just as good as no security. Um, they don't even offer it on most access points for the last, you know, five, six years. And it's a very easy security to crack. Um, and to quickly put a Band-Aid to patch that, they created WPA PSK, okay? And it's a little bit better, but it's still just as vulnerable. So do we recommend using it? No, not at all. I mean, just don't use it un unless you have to. And I'll tell you in a minute, you know, certain scenarios where you might have to use it. And then finally, when they had a little bit more time to patch this hole, they created WPA uh, PSK TPAD, which is um, a little bit better. So enabled to have longer passwords and you know, with that longer password, uh, it was harder to crack. So it's harder to go through the iterations uh, to have an automatic simulator that could go through the iterations and crack it. Okay, so it's definitely imperfect, but it's better than um, um, w, WP or WPA um, um, one, okay? So should I use it? Just try to avoid it, you know, unless it's a very old device, then you might have to. Um, and, you know, which we'll talk, again, talk about that here in a minute. So finally, when they had a, a lot more time to really understand what they're in for, um, they kind of took the underlying ar architecture, the WPA2, which was very wireless based, but they combined it with AES. And if you're not familiar with AES, it's a pretty widely um, security um, algorithm that they use across the board through IT. Um, you'll see a lot of desktop devices, a lot of servers, just a lot of different products, you know, even across, well across the enterprise that still um, base it on AES type of algorithm. So they essentially combine those two aspects and they made a pretty good um, security. It's, it's very hard to crack, crack, especially if you have very long, safe, secure passwords that are not just three characters or something. You know, if you get, start mixing out, you know, alphanumeric and, you know, make it like eight characters along with some numbers, it's still very hard to crack. And I will definitely say that it's the, the most widely used and, and, and most common out there. Um, and it's, it's the most compatible, which I'll talk about here in a mo moment. And this is why it's very important. And this is why we definitely say use it, okay? Because of the compatibility. And then finally, roll that into today. Uh, we have a WPA3 SAE. And this is a um, um, very, almost impossible um, standard to crack, okay? It, pretty much plugs up all the loopholes that you know they have seen in the past 20 years. And it's um it's you know very solid. Now for the 6.0 spectrum, you have to use WPA3 uh, SAE. Okay. So they kind of enforce that. Um, um, so but now the problem with WPA3 is it's still relatively new. I mean the client the client side is not fully caught up to it. If you have a very new device, you know, again, like the, you know, iPhone three, it, um, it, it'll work, you know, pretty seamless, right? But the key thing that they left out, okay? And this is where I probably should digress a little bit and talk a little bit about roaming, okay? Um, roaming today, the reason why it's so transparent and it's not an issue anymore, because there's a standard for it. Um, the two main ones that drive the roaming of clients from access point to access point is the 802.11k and 802.11r in particular, okay? And now uh, these standards, um, without going too much in depth, mainly has to do with passing along the wireless security from AP to AP as a client jumps, okay? That's the longest part to authenticate. And I'm sure you guys seen it where you got to try to connect to an AP. There's definitely a second or two lag um, before you could you know, hop onto the AP after you type in the security. Well, so in WPA3, they left it out. Uh, <clears throat> it's not in there. So if you have a little older device, 
that's why with WPA3, um, you're not going to see roaming at all, you know, happen. So even if your client could support it, um, it just won't roam. And, you know, the number one thing that we've seen with people use these access points is to do Wi-Fi calling. You know, that's the biggest app, I mean, especially among your clientele. I mean, they're folks working from home and, you know, moving around the house, making their calls, whether it's by Zoom or, um you know, even on cellular now, right? It's all about Wi-Fi calling uh, that they're going through. So you're going to have some serious issues roaming and, you know, that's what a lot of your clients want. So um, if you go to our security profiles now and click on the dropdown, this is what you will see, okay? Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about, you know, how to apply these. Now, what... I like to always do when I set up these access points, and this is what we've seen for the last 20 years, the most success is you got to enforce some policies. And no matter what the client wants, um, there are always ways um, to enforce um, securities and, you know, wireless LAN, and you will definitely get into, um, um, you know, how to do that. So, um, so, so even this this standard here, the WPA3, SEA, and the WPA2, which is a combined security. So if the client's able to connect to WPA3, then it will allow that. But if it cannot, then it'll connect through WPA2. But from a troubleshooting perspective, you don't quite know what it's connected to. And if you have roaming issues, you don't quite know what's happening. So that's why I really love to just pick WPA2, AES, and WPA3 um, and go with yeah. that for a particular wireless network. And I'll definitely dive a little bit more into how we do that um, effectively. Okay, so the next tab, uh, to click down to radios and this tab pretty straightforward. Um, you know, we put in all our best thinking into the settings and made it pretty much auto. So <laughs> whether you're looking at the 2.4, 5.0, or 6.0, just enable all of them and don't hit the edit button. Um, you know, don't change any of their settings in there and just let the APs do their magic. Um, you know, I know some folks love, like back in the old day, days, like they set certain things a certain way. They've been doing that for the last 10 years. Um, I'm just telling you a lot has changed and the best, um, thing or reason why you buy our APs is you know we put all the hard work into these tabs so um like if 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 I you know had you know what 100 say which I never do by the way I would take out this edit button so no one could touch it but um that's just me <laughs> but it's there so anyhow but don't but don't touch it all right so the next slide okay so SSID okay um it's a fancy name for the wireless network. So once you go into a wireless network, this is what's being broadcasted out, okay? So if you look at this set, um, um, the SSID, in this case, I have five of them here that are shown. It's actually, this is seven total, but you can see the names that I have um, for the different SSIDs. Now, the different SSIDs, also has um, the security, right? VLAN one, VLAN two, VLAN three. And at this point, it's probably becoming clear to you why I call it VLAN one, VLAN two, VLAN three, because for each one of these SSIDs, um, they belong to a VLAN. And I'll talk a little bit more about how and why you set that up, okay? Um, but you know, stay with me. I might, I know I'm probably a little bit confusing here, but um, um, hope, hopefully it'll be clear after I go over the next few slides. Um, so in this particular case, this is for the WAP 2 e so they have a 6.0 spectrum. And for each spectrum, um, enabling the VLANs that I need, that I want wireless, um, you know, capabilities. And as you could tell for the 6.0, some of the VLANs, um, I am not opening up to the network, okay? And I'll talk a little bit more about VLANs on the next slide. Um, so we'll we'll get more into why um, you know we 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 love to set up networks this way and why you know we highly recommend 
you know, you guys do that as well. Um, but before I get into it, is one thing you'll see is we do offer the band steering button, okay? And for those of you who don't know, what band steering is, you're leaving it up to the AP and client to make their own decisions, okay? Um, but to me, band steering is like leaving it up to your you know 16-year-old teenager to determine, you know, when they come home, how fast they drive the car, and, you know, how late to stay out. And you, you need to enforce a certain amount of things, and you, you want that predictability on the network. And what band steering does, it, if you're 6.0 capable, you're going to float to it. If you're 5.0 capable, you're going to float to that. But if you're not capable at all, you're just going to default to the 2.4, okay? Um, and I'm just flat out telling you, from our experience, it never works out that way. You know, clients sometimes get mixed up and, you know, we constantly get support calls. Well, you know, I'm not getting the 400 up and down that um, um, that we typically see. Well, you know, the client's actually on the 2.4, so you're only going to see the, um, you know, 100 up and down or, you know, come down to security. Well, this one device, this client can't connect on. Well, he's trying to actually connect to a WPA AES type standard when it's not really capable of, doing that. So I think you're starting to see um, why we don't recommend the whole band steering and why, you know, we want you guys to set up these networks to enforce policies. And that way it's very clear uh, what network each device should connect to. So with all that said, uh, the last four bullets here is what we recommend is put all legacy devices on one VLAN and give it that weak security that it needs. Um, you know, fortunately in this space, there are a lot of old remotes and devices that I know some of you install, you know, I like to blame the manufacturer because they don't update these devices to the latest and greatest. Um, especially now, I'm mean, trying to see a little lull in the amount of, um, of you know, forward thinking and, um, you know, putting the latest and greatest chipsets in the, the products that are sold in this channel. So. You know, unfortunately, you know, some of them could only support 2.4 and, you know, they can't support WPA2 AES. So you got to, you know, set up a wireless network that's 2.4 and it has the weaker security, right, for those devices. Now, once you set up that wireless security that way, it's a very vulnerable link into um, hacking the entire network, right? So that's where VLANs come into play. And then we'll talk about that more on the next slide. Um, from my experience, you know, if the devices are, you know, say, you know, eight years or more modern, um, they should have no issues connecting to the 5.0 and using WPA2 AES. So the majority of devices will be on the 5.0 um, spectrum. And you know, for my little demonstration of the speed test is the speeds are still really good, you know, on the 5.0. Uh, they're not as good as the 6.0, but, you know, the, the client will be happy, you know, as long as they have those devices that can support it. But, um, um, you know, the last two years, I, I, we haven't seen too many cases where client devices cannot support the 5.0 or WPA2 AES. So this is the way my house is set up and you know, I have a lot of devices and, um, you know, I, I haven't had any issues with compatibility and, you know, security. And then finally, you know, they mentioned earlier for the 6.0, you have to use WPA3 and the WPA3 does not roam well, right? Um, and a key feature that everyone uses is the whole Wi-Fi calling. This is the fastest way that you'll get a call from the customer um, as well. And this is why, you have to set up a separate 6.0 SSID network, you know, for you when you want that speed. Cause like, you know, say you're in New York city, right? Um, you you got to leave the customer with the expectation, hey, I'm setting up the 6.0, .0. you're going to get some incredible speeds, but more importantly, your calls are going to be crystal clear, but don't move, <laughs> stick to one AP, you know, fire it up at that location, you're connected to that one AP and stay there, right? because um, they don't roam. Because soon you start moving to, you know, from the master bedroom to the office, down to the kitchen, you're going to top APs and the experience for going from one AP uh, is going to be bad. 
you know, you're going to have to drop calls and you have to reconnect and go through that whole, um, you know, sequence because um, WPA3 does not have the 802.11R standard built in at this point, right? Um, you know, it may not be true five years down the road, but at this point, um, this is the way. And then finally, um, I don't think we do this enough, but, you know, just leaving clear instructions for the customers on the SSIDs and the security and which ones to, you know, connect to. Um, a product that's very popular out there is Sonos, and we get a lot of calls around it. Now, Sonos only connects on the 2.4 gig, um, but it also wants a very clean wireless network as well. So it doesn't like a lot of devices, you know, sitting on it. So many times um, we recommend just ha having a solid Sonos network. And so in this example here, you can't see it in a 2.4, but um, there's an SSID called Ono Sonos, right? Um, and in this SSID, we created a 2.4 for all the Sonos devices to connect to. Um, <clears throat> but we also created one on the 5.0 and 6.0, just in case that's where the customer might be res residing to control those Sonos. And the reason why I bring up Sonos having its own private network is um, once you get on its own private network, it's, it's amazing how well the streaming works. Um, you know, but when, once you start polluting it, you know, combining it with other devices that sends out a lot of broadcasts like oversee, then, you know, you're going to see a lot of glitchy type products. And, um, you know, most of the time dealers, you know, they don't quite understand, you know, what's happening um, with it. So um, I know we're almost out of time. So let me fly through the rest. So a little bit about VLANs, and I won't go too deep in it, but um, they're, they're not as hard to set up as you think, okay? Like if you use our pre-configured Fortinet routers, um, they, they come out of the box this way. And the main way to think about VLANs are, are their you know, segmented network for ease of administration, also to confine traffic to a particular network, okay? and also to enforce any kind of security policies that you may need. And then lastly now, if the customer has more than, more than 256 devices, um, it's, it's a perfect way to ex expand above it. So in this diagram here, we have a router and that single, what we call a trunk cable carrying the VLANs to the switch. And then from there is broken out uh, into whatever type of networks you want. And you know this might be a way to break out the you know the network. So the VLAN one might be all your um, management devices. VLAN two might be the lighting. Um, VLAN three might be all the ILT and you know all the security type issues that it resides. Um, and this oh, looks like that truncated. This this should say VLAN four. You know might be the cameras because you know cameras they do put out a lot of traffic. Is it constantly recording the NVR? And then VLAN 5 is are the computers because um, you want that to be as secure as possible because that's where a lot of the customer data reside. And finally, VLAN 6 might be a guest type network. And then the way it works on the AP side is the same thing. The SSIDs are the separate ports that breaks out the VLANs into um, the different devices. Okay. And then what you're seeing here on the app side is when you set up the SSIDs, you give it the name, you select the security profile, which we showed you, and that way you could enforce the security on that wireless network. And then finally, you put the VLAN ID in, whether VLAN one, two, three, all you do is you know, put a one there and then automatically from that one tag is communicating with the router. So it automatically knows um, you know, assuming it's a VLAN 802.1Q capable router, um, which is the router that we saw, okay? Um, and then finally, um, now, if you're 100% opposed to VLANs, um, RAPs do support it. And, you know, we do offer some layer three functionality um, that I want to quickly touch on. One is isolation. So if you have this box checked, any device on that wireless network cannot communicate with each other. So um, the perfect example is the AirPrint. Um, you will have issues. 
you know, your iPhone cannot find the air printer because everything is isolated within that network. But, you know, it could be a, a band-aid to security. Um, finally, the hide button, it just, you know, the SSID is not broadcasting simply as that. And this used to be you know, something that people used back in the day, but don't, I don't recommend it because it's not a substitute for wireless security. Um, anybody with a sniffer could automatically see what the SSID is very quickly. And then finally, the guest network, um, this is something that um, is only pertinent to that AP, has nothing to do with the rest of the network, where the AP itself will uh, isolate whoever connects into that network um, to only see um, itself, okay? So that way they, they can't see the rest of the network. So this will be a very short, easy way um, to set up the security if you're 100% opposed to VLANs. And then finally, once you deploy, and once you set up that one AP, you hit save. And as soon as you hit that button, a pop-up will come up and say, which other APs do you want to apply it to? And so that's how we apply um, those settings to the rest of the APs. And then finally, you hit continue, and you're done. And then um, you know, within a minute, all the APs will get it and be configured, OK? <laughs> And then lastly, um, if you hit connections, you'll see all the APs connected to, <laughs> you'll see all the devices connected to a particular AP. So it um, comes in very handy when you're um, troubleshooting. And then slide, um, just want to tell you a little bit about our WAP trading program before we open it up for questions, is um, we are taking back any APs because, um, I know a lot of folks have sold the whole Wi-Fi 5 for a long time because it's just, you know, I, I don't even think Luxel has Wi-Fi 6 out. Uh, Snap just released it. Um, but, you know, I mean, you gotta be installing Wi-Fi 6 and it's a perfect opportunity for you guys to upgrade all your customers. So that's why we're offering this. Um, it's a one-for-one -one swap, um, you know, with anything out there. So with that said, I know I covered a lot, so definitely want to open it up for any questions that you guys might have. Vic, I, I uh, this is fantastic. It's Carl Nickel. I just want to, I know I put it in the chat, but I wanted to reiterate that, you know, that heat map is a great way for dealers to, you know, use that as a selling tool to show the coverage, right? And I encourage uh, dealers to definitely participate in that free service. What is the best way for a dealer to get that, information to you guys um so that they can they can get it back uh they can email us at, at sales at um at you know poet.com so okay. yeah i mean we'll we'll acknowledge it and or you know if you have any questions or anything um they could contact Lindsay or um joey that's on the call right now and you know they could you know, walk them through it perfect Does anybody else have any questions? Feel free to either speak out or um, type them into the chat box. Vic, hey, Clark with c &E. does the um, heat mapping, I, I suppose it doesn't matter if it's a commercial project or not, so size and scale, it doesn't matter? Yeah, it doesn't. Um, yeah, we done many heat map for you know, customers. Um, I think the biggest one we did was like 40 APs. So okay. yeah, the tools are pretty robust and not an issue. All right. Well, definitely thank you for your time. I really appreciate you taking your um, you know, time out of your busy day and um, you know, hopefully it's informative. You know, feel free to contact us if you have any questions that might you know, come up and um, yeah, we'll be happy to help you. Awesome. This has been very good. Thank you, Victor. Oh, you're welcome. Um, of, I do want to say... Question. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yes, I was going to ask uh, if, if this webinar is going to be available uh, to watch later. Yes, actually, I was going to just say that. Um, so we do record the webinar and um, once the, you know, the, the meeting is done um, in a couple of days or so, I will upload it to our YouTube channel. Um, there are several ways that you can be aware of the following webinar as well as access to the recordings. Um, 
if you don't follow us on Instagram, please follow us. Uh, I post all of our webinars dates on there with a link. Um, also, if you are a current dealer and you want to share any of your installs of Poet uh, Solutions, feel free to uh, contact me through our official um, Poet, you know, Instagram. Or you can email me at Giselle at Poet and send me any of your installation, installation photos. We love to share, uh, you know, either videos or photos of your installations. Um, you can also follow us on LinkedIn, um, uh, Twitter, and on TikTok. Um, and in YouTube, you can find a lot of really great uh, detailed videos of all of our uh, solutions, whether it, it is how to install them, um, actual, uh, you know, uh, samples of how the product is working, how they all integrate together. We have of our POE lighting, our security lighting, our access points. There's a lot, a lot of very good informational videos on our YouTube channel. Um, and uh, again, if anybody else has any questions, uh, you can always reach out to Joey, Joseph at Poet, or you can reach out to Lindsay at Poet, um, you know, with any questions you may have about the product. If you have any questions about marketing, you can reach out to me, Giselle at Poet, um, and I can help you with any uh, pictures or access to any videos collateral you may need. Um, and also on our website, there is a page called Online Tools where you can find um, all the data sheets for all the specs for every single product we sell, uh, quick starts, um, a lot of uh, all the materials that you may need um, to get familiar with our products. Um, or how to install them is available on the website. Perfect. Uh, does anybody else have any additional questions for Vic? No, right. I think it's great. Thank you, great. I really do appreciate your time. This was very helpful, thank you. Thanks, Victor, right. this was a great, great presentation. Oh, th thank you. Yeah, we've already gotten some uh, feedback from some guys that are on here that have asked for the recording so they can show their other team members. So that's that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks, guys. Right. Take care, you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you.